So we're here at Greyfriars Kirk. And this is supposed to be the most haunted cemetery in Scotland. Indeed, I believe it may be. So we're gonna go in and have a look around and see what surprises we uncover along the way. So be sure to stick around and join us. Greyfriars Kirk is located right in the city center of Edinburgh, Scotland, and it's known to be the most haunted cemetery in all of Scotland. And Lori and I somehow, on the perfect day, managed to find this place. It was actually Lori's idea. And we explored it quite a bit. This is the tomb of John Bain. Look at this thing. John Bain was a lawyer and a writer. Everything we saw here was just incredibly creepy. Lori, this is the burial vault. Can we open the door? No, we can't open the door. We can try. Who's in there? I don't know. Pretty nice place. I still can't believe Lori wanted to open that door, but she really did. I'm glad she didn't. Those pictures in the very, or the, what do you want to call them? The carvings in the center? Yeah. It's crazy. They are carvings. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. I like it. Lori likes everything really creepy. We can't imagine what it'd be like to walk through this place at night and alone and in the dark. So the churchyard was founded in August of 1562. It actually replaced the churchyard at St. Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh. This marks the spot where over 100 covenants were hanged for religious beliefs between 1661 and 1668. I'm not coming here in the dark. This section of memorials is in front of Candlemaker's Row. Just off to the left, you'll see the Elephant House Cafe. Harry Potter fans will know all about this place. Then Lori found an open cell. It was one of these? Yeah, they had a roof on it, so it wasn't this one. They're not all open either. This is crazy. Oh, no. I come here at night. Huh, you have fun with that. We weren't even close to being done exploring this place. Wow, some of these graves are really super cool. Check this guy out right here, um, James Buchanan, Esquire. James Buchanan was a tobacco merchant who served twice as the Lord Provost of Glasgow. So this is the area between the church and the kirk, and the prison cells are kind of more off to the left here a little bit. You'll see them in a second. Imagine for a second being locked up in these things with basically an open roof to Scottish weather with hardly any food. I think you'd wish you were dead. I can understand why these are haunted and I'm sure they're haunted. Here's McDowell. found our way over to the South Yard, which is also known as the Coveter's Prison. And we had to go in because, well, somebody left it unlocked. So we saw this thing on Men in Kilts where they found this George McKenzie guy. So we had to go check it out. We were actually exploring the Coveter's Prison area and we thought we had found George McKenzie's cell, but we hadn't. You know, I would say it was this one, but it's saying the door is too tall. That has a padlock. Yeah, that's what the door is quite But then we did find it. Hey, maybe, look, if you're six feet tall, you'd have to get the bend. Yeah. 
Maybe this one. This could be the one. It has a roof. It has a roof. Maybe, maybe. It has a padlock. It has the right door. I don't know. It's the right door. So we found where George McKenzie's poltergeist likes to hang out, and then we ran into a groundskeeper named Nick, who offered to take us on a tour. So, of course, we accepted. Well, coming out of prison, which was run by Michael George McKenzie, who was the main jailer for in here. And what it was is they were, if they stood up against the English, against, I'm trying to see who it was, uh, King Charles II, and James the seventh, they were jailed in here. It was when the, when the Scots stood up to the English, when English were invading Scotland. This is what year we're talking, 1600s. So this okay. guy was appointed as the main jailer. His name was George Bloody Mackenzie, and he tortured them, murdered them, and here they were all locked. And these were all prison cells with no roof, no cover. So they were under all weather conditions. Um, locked in here and they were thrown like two ounces of bread a day to keep them fed basically so they died and then what happened was they, sh they tried to ship I think it was 600 of them over to America they said right just get rid of them to America <laughs> so what happened was they locked them under under um, sea deck chained up down below Ooh. and then they travelled up the North Sea and around the top of the Scottish coast up at Orkney and the sh shipwrecked off the rocks at Orkney and the abandoned ship but all the guys that were locked underneath they were just left to die um, so they never actually made made it to America and this this one here this tomb here is one of George McKenzie or I call him George Bloody McKenzie and his poltergeist I'll show you poltergeist is in this one down here people have claimed that they've been scratched they've, they've come away with scratches on their back um, people have felt different auras coming from the um, coming from the tomb itself. That's where this portal is supposed to be. This place is normally locked up during the day, so people aren't really allowed in here. Uh, we've just got it open because we're having working here just now. But there was an open day two weekends ago, and one of my um, co-workers had brought a group down and were telling them about the portal guys being in here. And the guy was doing what you're doing now, was like videoing it, recording it. And then one of the people in the party, their watch, just popped off their wrist. Just to watch that, just popped off their wrist. Here's an example of just one of the cells. Pretty creepy, huh? Yeah, I don't think you want to be in there very long. If you Google George Buddy McKenzie, because that big mausoleum out there that I'll show you in a minute, that's where his body is now. And in 2004, uh, two homeless kids broke in to the mausoleum for shelter. And there's a big metal grate as you go into the tomb and you've lifted it up and it went down. And it's only like a spiral staircase about five feet below ground. And there's four different coffins just sitting there. They're not buried, they're just coffins sitting there. They've taken the lid off the coffin, cut his head off, his face and his neck was sort of mummified, cut his head off and what you guys would call soccer. They've taken his head out into the graveyard and started kicking his head round the graveyard and playing soccer with it. This is his mausoleum. George so, McKenzie's so he mausoleum. he was the main jailer and he was the one that sentenced people to death and torture and all sorts of gruesome acts back in the 1600s. So that's when I was telling you about the kids that broke in. And then you go in and there's a metal grate on the ground, as I say. It's quite a heavy one. You lift it up and you go to spiral staircase about five feet down and there's four different coffins and then there's another level which is probably over about that area there about another ten, about another, about ten feet down from the ground and there's another seven which is supposed to be his kids seven kids and they're all just engraved, they're all just in um, coffins they're not buried or anything After Nick showed us George McKenzie's crypt we wanted to show him a vault we had seen not so long before Oh yeah, it's this one right here Do you reckon this is? You can educate me. Well, it looks like a vault. Ah, right. I, I'm which not, is like, because usually not. it's like, a, it's two pieces, almost like a clamshell, and they lower the lid ah, onto the... right. Possibly. Onto, they bury it. Yeah, because it's, well, it's pretty pretty solid and secure yeah, and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, pretty secure, yeah. But this, this one in here, that there was a family already in this um, mausoleum here, and George McKenzie had decided that he wanted that for him and his family. So he got them all removed, but all the family members moved out 
which is a family called the Forrester family. And he moved them all in here. He moved all the Forrester family in here. So he says, right, that's that's too grand and big for somebody else, for mother. I'm the main guy in here, so I want that for me and my family. So he moved all their bodies out, they got their bodies moved out there, so that when he passed and the rest of his family passed, that they could all be buried in there. And in here, I'll show you some cool graffiti. This is before Banksy. Well, it must be low. So Nick's a lot there. taller than we are. That's engraved in there in 1710. So we reckon that that's some sort of marquee tent that's been outside on the grass area here and then I've described 1710 with some royal marking and then we've got another two royal markings here and we don't know what they are or what they what they represent who when did they carve these in well that one was 1710 yeah because that's what date so but we're not sure when when, when, they, when they were trapped in here they carved them in yeah what's that about they don't know the story, they don't know the history, all they know that there's cabins in there. So this could, uh, could well have been part of the jail as well, because if you look above here, if you come back a bit, and you see above there, that's how the jail's there, with this metal roofing on it. So yeah, okay. There's no roof on it. So in, in Scottish weathers, you can imagine the harsh weathers that we have, and they were just trapped in, in these different cells. We have this other one here. Again, we don't know the significance of IH. 1710. Could it be somebody's initials in 1710? Yeah, possibly, yeah. And then I would finish off with this wee joke here, which is this one here, is Wee Tam for Edinburgh, 1989. <laughs> <laughs> 1710, 1800. <laughs> and then that's Wee Tam from Edinburgh, 1989. Wow, that's freaking cool. Yeah. So we just had a really cool tour courtesy of Nick, one of the groundskeepers here, and big shout out to Nick. It was awesome. He took us all around, showed us all the history. Yes, Nick was fantastic. Yeah, he was good. And it's funny because one of the reasons I wanted to come here was because of the Medic Hills initially. <laughs> we saw that too. And I think we found it and then I think Nick kind of verified it. Yep, we're good. So, so we hope you enjoyed that one. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. Click that like button. And we'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. Bye.